There are a lot of Chinese rockets in service today. You've probably heard of the Long March 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 11, and their many variants, but how do you recognize visually which rocket is which? Let me offer some basic tips which should help you recognize them in a blink of an eye. Now, we're going to focus on the state-owned Long March rockets because they still represent today the overwhelming majority of Chinese launches, but we'll also briefly discuss the commercial players at the end of this video. And for the sake of simplicity, we are also excluding rockets that have been retired. Now, with that caveat out of the way, let's get started. Let's start with the two rockets that you recognize almost immediately, the Long March 2F and the Long March 11. The Long March 2F is the easiest one because it's the only human rated rocket in China. And so it has this very recognizable launch escape system, which is the pointy thing that you see at the top of the rocket. And so if you see that, it's a Long March 2F. The Long March 11, on the other hand, is also very recognizable, but for different reasons. Firstly, it's the only solid field rocket among the Long March series. So it's usually surrounded by only very basic launch infrastructure. It is also cold launch, meaning that you can see a puff of black smoke as the rocket is ejected into the air before it ignites. And that's also exclusive to the Long March 11. And finally, it's the only Chinese rocket at the moment to have sea launch capabilities. So if you see a rocket launching from a barge, then you know that it's the Long March 11. Now with those two out of the way, let's move on to perhaps some of the trickier ones. One helpful detail that you should always pay attention to when you're trying to recognize Chinese rockets is the launch site surroundings. China's four launch sites look very different. You have Zhou Tren that was built in the middle of the Gobi Desert, surrounded by sandy flatlands and dunes. You then have Taiyuan in Shanxi province, built in a sort of hilly environment. And then you have Xichang in Sichuan province, with a very green and mountainous surroundings. And finally, you have Wenchang, which is situated on the coast with a tropical island type of scenery. And this launch location info is actually really helpful. So typically, if it's Wenchang, for example, so if there's this tropical island vibe, you know that it's necessarily a new generation rocket being launched and either a Long March 5, 7 or 8. The Long March 5 is China's most powerful rocket, and it's pretty easy to spot because it has this central body with a diameter of five meters, and it's the only new generation rocket to have such a big core stage. Its payload fairings are also roughly the same diameter as the rocket body, which is not the case of the Long March 7 and 8. And it's the only Chinese rocket with a hydrogen first stage. And so during launch, you will notice a more transparent rocket plume for the central stage. There are currently two variants of the Long March 5. If you see a second stage, you know that it's the Long March 5 standard rocket for launches into high orbits. On the other hand, if you see these massive fairings and no second stage, then you know it's the Long March 5B for launches into low Earth orbit. Now, moving on to the Long March 7 and 8. These two rocket series have thinner core stages and side boosters. If you have four side boosters, you know that it's necessarily the Long March 7 series. There's the seven standard two-stage version, which is used for low Earth orbit, and that's a bit shorter in height. And there's also the Long March 7A, which has this additional Hydrolox third stage, making the rocket roughly 60 meters tall, the tallest rocket in China, by the way, and giving it this really elongated look. On the other hand, if the rocket has two side boosters or no side boosters, then it's necessarily a Long March 8 rocket. The version with no side boosters is sometimes called the Long March 8A, while the two side booster version is sometimes called the Standard 8 version, but these aren't official names, so don't quote me on that one. And so just like that, you can already recognize the Long March 5, 7, 8, and 11s, which is not too bad, right? Let's now look at the remaining rockets, the Long March 2 to 4s and the Long March 6. The Long March 2 to 4s are older generation rockets which use old fashioned engines running on UDMH and nitrogen tetroxide. This hypergolic mix is easy to spot at engine ignition because unburnt nitrogen tetroxide is quite often released and nitrogen tetroxide decomposes into nitrogen dioxide, which has this very characteristic orange brown color. And so at launch, if you don't see this orange brown puff of smoke and you're not in Wenchang, so you don't have that tropical island scenery, then you're necessarily dealing with the Long March 6 series, which is being launched from Taiyuan. If the rocket has no side boosters, it's the Long March 6 standard version with the characteristic second stage that's thinner than the first stage. And otherwise, it's the newly developed Long March 6A with four solid field strap-on boosters. And with that, we're left with only the Long March 2, 3, and 4s. 
Now, starting with the Long March 3s, these rockets launch satellites into geostationary transfer orbits, so they're necessarily launched from Xichang to get that nice additional tangential velocity from the Earth's rotation. So if you see a launch in a mountainous green location, there's a good chance that it's Long March 3, although the Chinese do occasionally launch Long March 2s and Long March 4s from Xichang as well. Long March 3s are also the only older generation rockets in service with strap-on boosters, if we exclude the Long March 2F that we already mentioned previously. With two side boosters, it's the Long March 3C, and with four side boosters, it's the Long March 3B. And finally, if there are no side boosters, it's necessarily the Long March 3A. Now, some may say that the Long March 3A looks similar to the Long March 2s and the Long March 4s, but the 3A can be distinguished by its height. As a heavier lift launch vehicle, it is 10 to 20% taller, and it consequently has this more elongated look. And so at this point, we're left with only the Long March 2s and 4s. And these are the hardest to identify because precisely they have a lot of similarities visually. If we restrict ourselves only to rockets that are in service, and once again putting aside the Long March 2F, then we are left with the Long March 2C, 2D, 4B, and 4C, which are all small medium lift launch vehicles with only core stages and no side boosters. We can generally single out the Long March 2C due to its different painting scheme. It lacks the red checkered patterns that the 2D, 4B, and 4C have in common, and it has comparatively more blue rings. And the different painting scheme of the 2D, 4B, and 4C makes sense because basically these rockets are based on the same architecture. The 2D is basically a shorter Long March 4 with the upper stage chopped off, and the 4C is an improved version of the 4B. Launch site location can also help us tell them apart here. Long March 2D has generally been launched from Zhou Trin, the Long March 4B generally from Tai Yuan, and the Long March 4C seems to be equally launched between Tai Yuan and Zhou Trin. Now, there's also been a number of commercial launch startups emerging in China over the past eight years, such as Land Space, Galactic Energy, Cast Space, and many others. And these guys are all aiming to put into service liquid field rockets, which should have similar payload capacities as their Long March equivalents. But how would you differentiate between the two? You can easily tell them apart from Long March rockets due to the absence of this staple red checkered pattern and blue rings mentioned earlier on the rocket bodies, but also on the side boosters and even on launch platforms. And by the way, as a fun fact, what these checkered patterns and blue rings are, are photogrammetric targets. What this means is that optical tracking stations on the ground lock onto the rocket during launch, and they're able to determine three-dimensional motion and distances with the help of these patterns. Now, this technique is not specific to China. You can see, for example, these patterns also on the Saturn V and on SLS, where they are used for similar purposes. But I think that CASC, the Chinese you know, space conglomerate, has taken this one interesting step further by making it the single most distinguishable characteristic of the Long March rockets. As mentioned, other Chinese rockets from China, you know, the I spaces, the land spaces, the galactic energies, don't have this aesthetic trait. And so with everything discussed in this episode, you should be able to recognize at the moment all active Chinese Long March rockets. If you're interested in this kind of fun fact on Chinese rockets, do check out our other episode relating to why Chinese rockets drop white fragments when they launch. As always, a special thanks to all our Patreon members for supporting this channel and making it sustainable. And otherwise, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.